do you, could you please give us a brief outline of your past, present, and future? <laughs> sure. So thank you for inviting me. Um, so I'm Rafael. I'm originally from Brazil. I moved to the UK in 2000, uh, well, December 2000. Um, one, I can't remember if it was 2001 or 2002. I think it was 2001. It was a while ago. Uh, I moved here mainly to study English. So I thought I could, uh, I would learn English and then go back to Brazil. But then I ended up st staying because I fell in love with someone. And then uh, one thing leads into another and to another. And then I'm here now for 19 years. But um, so life, it wasn't easy at the beginnings because I couldn't speak English and I left my job at Microsoft in Brazil to, um, to wash dishes. So that was my very first job. I was a kitchen porter um, did that for a while, um, did all the manual jobs you can think of, um, you know, giving leaflets on the street and um, wash dishes and I was a cleaner. But um, I, think it, I think whenever you have a... Um, when you have a dream and you have a goal, um, you know, that didn't put me off, even though there was many nights of crying, thinking what the hell I'm doing here? <laughs> Why am, you know, I left my, my good life in Brazil to move to the UK. So fast forward, uh, my first opportunity to become an entrepreneur was when my flatmates were moving out and I decided that I was going to keep the house and then rent out to the other rooms so I could save money on the rent. So um, it was a really nice house in Marleybone. So uh, and there were Colombians going back to Colombia. So I spoke to, land, to the landlord and I said, oh, this is what it's like to do. He accepted. So I then had an idea. I thought, oh, this, is, this sounds good. So I then um, was studying English. My, you know, I could speak, oh, I thought I could speak English then. I got my very, um, my first good job was one of those, uh, people that, you know, in Selfridges, you, they stop you to spray perfume on you. So that I did that for a long time. Um, but then because I rented my second house and then people started calling to rent the rooms, I got fired from my job because I was on the phone all the time. Mm. So I got another job and then I got fired again. So after being fired about four times... <laughs> Wow. Because I was always on the phone, you know, I had it to answer people looking for rooms. I thought, oh, do you know what? I, I don't think I'm going to work anymore. I don't want to be fired anymore. I will just do this. So by then, I was managing six properties. So I decided to leave employment and I was just going to do this. Um, by house number seven, I was doing everything. So I was cleaning the house. I was on block toilets. I was changing handles. So I really learned to be a handyman. So when I had my seventh house, I then started, you know, hiring people. So I then had a handyman once a week. And so fast forward 14 years, I then was managing 75 properties. I was buying, selling properties. I had 225 tenants. So um, it, it became quite a, quite a business. Um, I sold it. And then I wrote my first book in 2014, Moving Abroad One Step at a Time. Then I, from there, I decided to launch a tech business and I got funding, moved to the US, but then after about a year and a half, the business didn't work, come back to the UK, launched another business. And then uh, because of Brexit, that was 2016 by then, because of Brexit, my business didn't work. I lost my investors because it was a, it was a co-working space helping migrant entrepreneurs. By then, I was very strong about this feeling of helping migrant entrepreneurs. And the idea was that it's because as, a, as an entrepreneur, I really managed to improve my life. You know, I, I managed to uh, um, go up the social ladder, for, you know, from the beginning when I first arrived in the UK, that I couldn't speak English and was only taking the bus and eating tuna sandwiches. Um, I then moved on to, you know, I could take the tube. I was going to rush. I was having like a normal middle class life because obviously entrepreneurship allowed me to have the income needed for you to socialize, for you to, you know, uh, for you to travel and do all that. So it became for me a mission to help other migrants to understand that they can do whatever they want to do if they put their mind into it. So if they truly believe 
that they can do it and they search for the tools um, and, and help for it. So I run um, hundreds of free events, giving people uh, inspiration, giving tools, teaching them how to do things, how you improve your profile, how do you write, how do you get published in the media. Um, and one of the things that I really learned is that the media can really help raise your profile. So when I decided to do my MBA in 2016, um, it was a personal achievement. Um, I started four different degrees and I didn't finish. So I thought, okay, this time I will do it. Um, and then these days that are MBA is that if you have enough work experience as a, as a manager or, or as, a, as an entrepreneur, you don't need to have a degree. So I then completed my MBA because obviously, you know, I've, I've had my business for 10 years. I had 15 employees. So I know, I knew exactly how to manage and, and you, you needed to have that kind of experience to be able to do the MBA that I did. Um, and it was brilliant. I, during the MBA, I really found um, my passion, which is PR. I, I love the PR industry. I love the feeling that gives when someone, when one of my clients is featured in the media, you know, that sense of pride, of achievement. Now you see your knowledge and your expertise in Forbes or the BBC or, you know, it's, it's fantastic. So it's, um, so I created a platform called Guided PR and we use artificial intelligence to connect journalists with small business owners. And the way that it works is the business owners create a profile and say what the expertise they have. And then when a journalist is writing a story and needs someone to interview, the journalist will add the, in the platform a request. So let's say David is writing for Forbes and he's writing about new spices that can help people lose weight after the lockdown. So he will put that request in the platform. So, so the, yeah, I know, I know because I'm one of them. <laughs> I need this. <laughs> so um, then the platform will look for nutritionists, for doctors, dietitians, and send the profile to the journalist, um, also with the comments. So if the comments are good, then the journalist use the comments. So my client gets featured in the media and the journalist gets the, um, the comments completely free of charge. Uh, it's been a great experience. So I've had over uh, almost 700 features in the BBC, Financial Times, um, uh, what else? The Sun, the Daily, uh, the, the, the Daily Mail, uh, Virgin TV, Capital Radio, you know, the list quite, goes on. Quite a good variety of different channels. Yes, 